Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at goal, joining you on match day. The Europa League quarterfinal second leg has arrived, Arsenal versus Slavia Prague in the Czech Republic. A crucial, crucial match for so many reasons for Arsenal, for Mikel Arteta, for the ongoing process as uh, it has become known Um yeah, very, very little room for error for everyone involved now after that 1-1 draw at the Emirates last week. That crucial injury time goal for Slavia Prague, the equaliser, absolutely turning the game on its head. It was a tie. Arsenal should have won. They should have won comfortably, but they fluffed their lines in front of goal far too many times. And then even when they did finally get themselves in front, they still managed to throw it away right at the end of that injury time equaliser from the corner and it leaves Arsenal with it all to do now against the Slavia side who are very very good at home haven't lost a game in all competitions I don't think at home this season um, and they're going to cause Arsenal an awful lot of problems you would expect they're going to cause a lot more problems than they did last week because I actually thought they were pretty poor last week Slavia they were absolutely there for the taking but those missed chances proving really really costly for Arsenal um, and yeah they're going to have to play perform better they're going to have to take their chances tonight and they're going to have to be very, very defensively sound, which they weren't really last week. When, once they got ahead, once, as usual with Arsenal, they failed to failed to hold on to their lead. They failed to see a game out, and they're going to have to do an awful lot better than that. Game management is going to be so key today. If they do get their noses in front, and they've got to see the game out. They've got to do the right things, avoid the silly errors, and avoid giving it Prague a way back into the game. Mikel Arteta knows exactly how difficult it's going to be he says it here he says we know that it's going to be very difficult and they've been doing extremely well at home they are really strong we have been strong away though so I don't want to focus too much on them I want to focus on what we do and the task ahead of us and uh, we have to do our things to the best possible chance to go through uh, he's not wrong there he's calling on these big game players to step up he says we've shown that in big games that big players have to step up and create magic moments and you need that, so let's hope we can have them tonight. Absolutely spot on. The big players need to play well for Arsenal tonight, but are a couple of them going to play? It's looking unlikely with Aubameyang and Odegaard. Not sure yet, not confirmed yet, but they weren't involved in training, or unless Arsenal deliberately didn't have them pictured in training yesterday to uh, maybe pull off a surprise in the team news tonight. They didn't look like they were involved at London Colney. Uh, Aubameyang obviously missing out on the Sunday night through illness. Odegaard been struggling with that ankle injury. Bukai Saka did train. Emil Smith-Rowe did train. Um, so that's good, but didn't want any sign of Odegaard or Aubameyang. Arsenal haven't released a travelling squad yet for the players who have gone. None of the pitches were came out as you, which usually happens in terms of who got on the plane that sort of thing so maybe they're pulling in a little bit of a fast one but certainly the team news seems to suggest that Arsenal may well be without their captain and without Martin Odegaard once again which will be a shame um, as Mikel saying there big game big games requ require big players and they are big players we've seen Pierre Emerick Aubameyang do it for Arsenal in the past yes he's not having that good a season this season um, yes, there are question marks about how his relationship with Mikel Arteta is going, but he still does produce in the big games. We saw it against Benfica when Arsenal needed him most earlier on in this competition. He popped up with a goal right at the end to send Arsenal through. In the FA Cup final and FA Cup semi-final, it was Aubameyang whose goals got Arsenal through. He knows how to deal with big big games. He knows how to deal with the pressure. Um, and I think if you could have, if you asked Mikel Arteta at the start of it, would you want Bamiang involved tonight? He would absolutely say yes. And he certainly would with Martin Odegaard as well, who's become such a key player for Arsenal in a short space of time. The boost there for Arsenal is that Emil Smith Rowe is back. So even if Odegaard doesn't make it, then you can just bring Emil Smith Rowe in, play him in a number 10 role. And there's not too much of a difference there. I mean, we know how impressive Smith Rowe has been since December. Then that does beg the question of who plays on the left, who plays on the right. Um, uh, and I'll get to that in a little bit when I talk about the big decisions. But certainly the team news suggests that it could be a bit of a mixed uh, mixed evening for Arsenal. Pleasing to have Smith Rowe and Saka back on one hand, disappointing to potentially be without Aubameyang and Odegaard on the other hand. Obviously, there's no Tierney. Obviously, there's no David Luiz. Those two are both out for long term with their injuries, and we're not sure if we'll see them again yet this season. So Arsenal missing some big names ahead of the game, which isn't ideal, but at this stage of the season, you've got to deal with it. Slavia Prague have got players out as well. Um, so I don't think Arsenal can have too many complaints about that. Okay, so looking at the big decisions, I think there's really two for Mikel Arteta in terms of what he's going to do today. 
do, what what happens at left back? Obviously, no Tierney. We saw Granit Xhaka play there against Sheffield United. And what happens up front? Do you stick with Martinelli, who got the start against Sheffield United, scored, impressed? What do you do in those two positions? So we'll start with left back. I think this one we're going to see Cedric Suarez play at left back. I'll be surprised if we see Granit play there again. Not totally surprised, but I would just think for a game of this importance, you probably want Granit Xhaka in your midfield. Um, for me and I think Slava are going to cause more of a threat to Arsenal than Sheffield United did so maybe having Xhaka at left back he's going to be exposed more than he was on Sunday night so I think we'll probably see Cedric Suarez go over on the left hand side Xhaka come back into the midfield alongside Thomas Partey um, I think if you go with Xhaka on the left then that's certainly it. like I said I think he'll probably be exposed more against Prague tonight than he was on Sunday night but I also think it's going to weaken you in midfield because you're not going to have that partnership of Xhaka and Partey in midfield and Mikel talking about it um, explaining yesterday when I asked him about it actually about Xhaka is that is that a long-term solution for you for the rest of the season at left back and he said we looked at our options in relation to the opponent on Sunday and the formation that we wanted to use to fit the qualities of the players we had available obviously not having Kieran it was a big hit because of what he produces now important he is to the team now we have to find different ways and the good thing with Granite is that he can play in two or three positions I can see him still playing the centre-back when needed because of his discipline his commitment and his qualities and he did a good job in a different game for the way Sheffield was set up we'll decide before the match now I'm not sure he's going to follow that. I think he certainly did it for specific reasons against Sheffield United, like he said, the way they set up. Um, but I just think it's going to be a little bit different this time around and we'll see Granite come back to his normal position in the centre of midfield with Cedric Suarez probably playing on the left. The other big decision is what happens up front. If Smith if there's no Odegaard and Smith Rowe plays at number 10, then who who do you play on the left-hand side? You presume Saka's going to move back to the right, obviously play this sort of 10 role against Sheffield United. You don't think that's going to happen. So you presume Saka fit, he's going to play on the right. Smith Rowe, number 10. So who plays on the left? Do you play Nicolas Pepe, who uh, impressed against Sheffield United, didn't score? Or do you play Gabriel Martinelli, who played against Sheffield United, scored his first goal of the season, impressed? Or do you go with someone like Willian, who, although I think all of us are going to say no, don't go with him. We've seen that Mikel Arteta has done it time and time again. He did it in the first leg. So what is Mikel going to do? That's a big decision for him now. Do you want... I don't know what you probably perceive as a little bit of tactical stability with Willian there. Not for me. I think that is an absolute no-no. You don't go Willian. This is the game Arsenal need to score in. Willian hasn't even scored a goal this season. You need a goal threat on the left-hand side. You don't need someone who's going to slow the play down and potentially look to play the ball backwards and sideways. You want someone who's going to get the ball, cause Slavia problems, push them back and be a goal threat. For me, I would play Gabriel Martinelli just because um, of how what he did against Sheffield United. Um, now, I've got a sneaky feeling he might not. I think we might see Nicolas Pepe start. I think Mikel might look at it and think, can I play Saka, Smithrow and Martinelli in such a huge game all together with an average age of, what, 20? I'd say that is in those three positions behind the striker, which we presume is going to be Alexander Lacazette if Aubameyang's not injured. I just have a sneaky feeling he might go for Pepe for more of an experienced head. Um, you know, he's still not that experienced, Pepe, but he's certainly more than Gabby or, or the rest. So I've got a sneaky feeling he might balance it out a little bit. Um, I mean, look, Pepe's still going to cause a threat down that side. He's still going to run at the ball. He's um, run at the t defender. That's going to be his th first thought, unlike Willian. So I wouldn't be totally against it. I just feel like Martin Lee deserves a start after what he did against Sheffield United. But I've got a sneaky feeling Mikel might err on the side of caution a little bit, leave Gabby on the bench as a potential impact substitute in the second half and go with Nicolas Pepe. But again, that's just my opinion. It's not anything that I think is definitely going to happen. OK, I will get to my predicted 11 in a little bit. I just want to talk a little bit about what this means, this match means, how crucial it is for Arsenal. Get this wrong. And it could be really costly, not in terms of just the season, but in terms of next season as well. And the summer transfer market it is that big for Arsenal. It looks like European football is out of the window when it comes to the Premier League. There is still a slight chance of sneaking into, the, into a qualifying spot for certainly the Europa League, but not the Champions League. This is the big one for Arsenal. Win this competition and there is a chance of doing it. You get yourselves in the Champions League. You bring in all that money and suddenly your transfer plans for the summer, everything changes completely. You can go and probably look at your number one targets, list of targets for players brought in. If this goes wrong today and Arsenal failed to get into Europe via the Premier League, then suddenly that list comes down a lot and you are relying on selling players, getting good money in. You're relying on the owner finding some cash around to give you as well. You know, Mikel Arteta won't want to do that. He'll want to be desperate to get themselves in the Champions League. The process, again, as we talk about, you know, 
is flatlined a little bit. Arsenal get themselves into the Champions League through this way, through the Europa League, then suddenly that process can carry on big time because Arsenal are going to be more attractive to players. They're going to have a lot more money in this pandemic era uh, and they're going to be able to go out and get the type of players that they want in the summer. You know, they can start go and compete with with other clubs for Odison Edward. Um, they can potentially go and get themselves Martin Odegaard on a permanent transfer from um, from Real Madrid. So this is a crucial, crucial game for Arsenal, for Arteta. Yes, there's still further rounds to go. You've got the semi-final, if you get through this, you've got the final, uh, potentially against Villarreal, Manchester United, you would think. But you got you can only take it one step at a time. And given the problems Arsenal have got themselves into after the first leg, this is massive for them. They've got to show fight, they've got to show spirit, they've got to show leadership. Um, and Mikel Arteta has to get everything right. This is a crucial game for him as well as it is for Arsenal. His blueprint, his plan, what he's been talking to Edu about, so much of it rests on getting this right and getting yourselves through to the final and trying to get yourselves into the Champions League. It is a massive game for Arsenal. There is absolutely no denying that. OK, quickly, I just want to talk about some comments he made about Sabahis and Odegaard. I just mentioned Odegaard there and Arsenal's plans for him in the summer, potentially. Obviously, we know they want to turn that move permanent if they can. Um, he was asked about the loan deals for them and, you know, how how it could what could happen with them in the summer. And he says, with the financial position that we've been in, we've had a few different ways to try and recruit good players to the club. Um, and it gives you the possibility to see with both eyes on a daily basis how these players can improve the team and how they can adapt to this league. In both cases, Danny and Martin, I'm really happy with both of them. And the decision has to be decided at the end of the season because there is, in this case, the same club involved with both of them. And I will have these conversations. Personally, I'm not sure about Sabah's long-term at Arsenal. Um, I think money probably could be spent better served elsewhere. He's a really odd player, Sabas. He can be brilliant on his day. I thought it was great against Sheffield United, but then he can absolutely stink the place out as well, as he has done plenty of times in the last few months. Um, I just think if you've got money to spend, you've got to prioritise it on other areas more than Sabas. For me, um, you know, go out and save that money and go out all out for someone like Basuma um, from Brighton, who I think could make a massive impact, who I really, really like. In terms of Odegaard, look, if Arsenal can sign him, sign him they absolutely should quality player he's only going to get better he's young uh, got huge market value um, yeah for me out of those two Real Madrid players if Arsenal can get one deal done in the summer it should be for Martin Odegaard because he's already shown what a player he's, he's, he's already is and he's only going to get better he's going to adjust more to the Premier League like I said he's young you sign him I think you protect your market value for a long long time as well because if you get him down to a long term contract he's only going to improve and his value is only going to go up so I would absolutely sign Martin Odegaard if you can in the summer and again a lot of that depends on how tonight goes how the semi-final goes how the final goes if Arsenal get themselves in the Champions League they've got a much better chance of pulling off a transfer like that than if they don't OK, just before I go today, let's go with my predicted 11. Remember the word predicted. This is not what I think is going to, um, what I want is going to happen. It's what I, I'm predicting Mikel Arteta is going to do. I've already given most of it away, actually, with already what I've been saying in this video. Uh, so it's probably not going to come too much of a surprise. But this is what I would expect Mikel to go for. I'm going to say Leno in goal, obviously. I'm going to say Bellerin at right back, Holding and Gabriel. A um, little bit unlucky for Pablo Mari, who I think is great. Um, but I still think in these games, Mikel tends to prefer Gabriel. So um, Gabriel and Holden as a centre-backs. Like I said, I think Cedric will see go back to left-back tonight, and that will allow Granit Xhaka to come into central midfield and play alongside Thomas Partey. I'm going to say Saka on the right, Smith-Rowe at number 10, Pepe on the left, and Lacazette up front. So remember, that is just my predicted 11. It's not what I want. Like I said, I actually would I'd prefer to see Martinelli over Pepe, I think, for this one. Um, but I think it'll be the other way around. Obviously, if Aubameyang is fit and has travelled, that might change things. Um, the same with Odegaard as well. But what it looks like at the moment is both of those players is going to miss out. Um, obviously, we'll wait and see when the uh, team news gets announced later on in the day. So one more time for you there. My predicted 11 for tonight. Leno, Bellerin, Holding, Gabriel, Cedric, Xhaka, Party, Saka, Smith-Rowe, Pepe and Alexander Lacazette leading the line. Big game for Lacazette. He's been in impressive form today for uh, recently. If Aubameyang does miss out, Arsenal, like a Mikel Arteta said, need big players to step up and make their mark on the big stage. No bigger stage for Alexander Lacazette to do that on tonight than to get the goals his team need to get Arsenal through in the absence of their captain. Right, that's it from me, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your day. Uh, enjoy the game tonight. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we get the result we need. Enjoy it, everyone. I'll speak to you very, very soon.